Now these are the generations of the sons of Noah, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, and unto them were sons born after the flood. The sons of Japheth, by these were the eyes of the Gentiles divided by the eyes, everyone, after his tongue, after their families, and in their nations. These are the sons of Ham, after their families, after their tongues, and their countries, and in their nations. And these are the sons of Shem, after their families, after their tongues, and their lands, after their nations. These are the families of the sons of Noah, after their generations, in their nations, and by these were the nations divided in the earth after the flood. Exodus the 20th chapter, verses 1 through 17. Go ahead. And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image, or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Thou should not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shall thy labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou should not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. And let's go into Ecclesiastes, the 12th chapter. Read verses 13 and 14. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Now let's go into Revelation chapter 22, verses 14 and 15. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. For without our dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. So anytime, sisters and brothers, somebody tell you, don't tell you that you don't have to keep the commandments, they are trying to get you cut off. Mm -hmm. It is plain and simple. But with this, sisters and brothers, this is Black History Month. Only reason I do this is because we have Black History Month. And uh, I just got tired of telling American Slave History Month and Black History Month. Because if you listen to what we are told every year and the people talk about black history, 
You think that our history, we was, our history started right here in America. Sisters and brothers, we have a great big history because this Bible is written about our history. So we're going to deal with black history, but I want you to understand a lot, I had a brother say to me one time, you know, the brothers, uh, or some brothers think that you don't care about Israel, but I, but I tell them that you are a nationalist more than any people. I am not a nationalist. I am a Christian. I don't worry about going back to Jerusalem because the Lord said he's going to take Israel back to anyway. The thing that I worry about is teaching you how to get salvation. That is what the Israeli God is about, sister and brother. But I teach black history because it's in the Bible, and we need to know because our young people, especially young people, don't have a clue where we come from. And if they was taught the Word of God, I mean the, the Bible according to the Word of God, we wouldn't have so much rebellion among the children. Because all this crime and, 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 and carjacking and all this stuff, that, what, that's, that's rebellion, sisters and brothers. Mm -hmm. If you are going to teach a people, teach them the word of God, this Bible covers everything. Now, we're going to do this black history, sisters and brothers, and the title, call, call me the title of these lessons, Black History Told by the Prophets. Part one, color. Black history told by the prophets. Part one, color. Well, Brother Bull, why, you, why would you concern yourself with color? Because everybody that calls your name, they put white on it. You have a people that's running around calling themselves Jews. And every time they show you about Israel, movies and everything is always white folks which wouldn't make no difference to me. However, when I went into the Bible, the Bible begged the difference. So what we're going to do, sisters and brothers, we're going to show you by example and by comparing people with people so we can find out who look like what. Why would I want to know who the Israelites are? Because when we get into our lesson prophecy and the teachers and what Israel is chosen for and that is to teach all of the rest of the sons of Adam how to get salvation. So if you need to know how to get salvation then you need to know who to go and get it from. And we're going to show you that during this series sisters and brothers. But this one is color. It all starts sisters and brothers with the sons of Noah. Because if you are in existence, you come out of Noah. That's why when I look back, sisters and brothers, and I see all this hatred and vitriol among people. I said, do they really understand that we all are sisters and brothers regardless of the color? Apparently somebody don't. But we're going to start this in Genesis, the 10th chapter. Genesis 10. They come up with all kind of people like Lilith and another creation. I'm going to tell you right now, if you didn't come by way of what we're going to read, you don't exist. It's all that simple. And we're going to take our time and we're going to look at this thing. I used to have a lesson that's called Israel Identified Through the Scripture. Used to do it in one lesson. But I, I started noticing I've left out so many things until I need to break this up. And by the time I got through broken it, breaking it up, it was in five parts. Genesis 10 and verse 1. Okay, go ahead. Now these are the generations of the sons of Noah, uh -huh. Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Go ahead. And unto them were sons born after the flood. Now this is everybody see, Lord, the Lord drowned the old world because it got so messed up. It's just about where it is now. It got so messed up until he drowned the whole world. And the only one he saved was Noah and his household because he found some goodness in Noah. So this is his, his son, Ham, Shem, and Japheth. <clears throat> if you didn't come out of one of these sons, you don't exist. Go ahead and read. The sons of Japheth, 
Gomar and Magog and Mayday, and Javan and Tubal and Meshach and Tyrus, uh-huh. and the sons of Gomar, Ashkenaz and Riphath and Togomar. Go ahead. And the sons of Javan, Elisha and Tarshish, Kittim and Dodanim. Go ahead. By these were the isles of the Gentiles divided in their lands, everyone after his tongue, after their families in their nations. No. The Gentiles, according to what we just read, came out of Japheth. Ain't that correct? Mm -hmm. But you have been taught that if you ain't a Jew, you're a Gentile. No, sisters and brothers. Only one that can carry the title as Gentile is the one that designated here in the 10th chapter of Genesis. We got Israelites now that made the nine, the, the, uh, uh, nine lost tribes Gentiles. Sisters and brothers, Gentile, when you run all of these names down, and I ran them down, they are all white people of Gen- what we call European. Those are the Gentiles. The ones that run this country, Gentile. East and Western Europe that's running this world, Gentile. And people even want to make the uh, Chinese and the Japanese up Gentile. This is the time of the Gentile. Mm-hmm. All you got to do is look around and see who's in power. John E. is right in the midst of it. We even have people try to make John E.'s Hamites. Hmm. Gentile sisters and brothers. But go ahead and read. What verse? See. So now every time somebody tell you, ask you his. Well, who are the Gentiles? You said the children of Japheth. Mm-hmm. And that is spot on. And that is the perfect answer. You can't go in there and find nothing else. Like people say, well, you know, uh, look like they called Egypt Gentile. No matter what they call them, you know what it is. When Abraham was pursuing the people that knocked off Sodom and Gomorrah, he caught them in Dan. Wait a minute, Brother Boy, Dan hadn't been existed. Well, only reason you know that Dan wasn't in, in existence because Dan came out of Israel, so how can Abraham catch up and whoop somebody in Zane? But you know the truth. In the area where whatever was called at that time was something else. But by the time whoever did the translation, they knew this was Dan, so they put Dan there. Y'all understand? Mm-hmm. So who are the Gentiles? The children of Japheth. And no Body else. Go ahead and read. What verse? Six. Mm-hmm. And the sons of Ham, Cush, and Mizraim, and Put, and Canaan. Uh huh. And the sons of Cush, Seba, and Havilah, and Sapta, and Rehamah, and Saptaka. Uh huh. And the sons of Rehamah, Sheba, and Dedan. Go ahead. And Cush begat Nimrod. He began to be a mighty one in the earth. Now, these are the sons of Ham now. Black folks, sisters and brothers. Mizraim, well, the oldest one was Cush. Mizraim, then he named all the rest, then he named all the four brothers, then he named their children. Skip down to uh, verse 10 and go ahead. And the beginning of his kingdom was Babel. Now, this is Nimrod, the great hunter. The beginning of his kingdom was Babel. I tell people all the time, the original Babylonian was black folks. That's right. But the Assyrians brought in the called in, the Assyrians, which are black folk too, brought in the called in, in the Babylon, and all of a sudden the Babylonians was white folks. But when you go back to the beginning, Nimrod is the one that set up Babel. Go ahead and read. 10. And Erech and Akkad and Calne in the land of Shinar. Go ahead. Out of that land went forth Asher and builded Nineveh and the city Rehoboth and Calne. Now, you know the Nineveh that Jonah didn't want to prophesy to? Mm-hmm. They came out of the land of of Nimrod. In other words, they was, the Assyrians was Cushites. Okay? Black folk, just like me and you. Go ahead and read. 12. And recent, between Nineveh and Calais, the same is a great city. Go ahead. And Mizraim begat Ludum and Ananim and Leobim and Naphtahim. Mizraim is Egypt. I'll tell you who he got. We're going to find out who came out of Egypt. Go ahead and read. And Pathrasim and Casluhim. Out of whom came Philistim and Captorim. So now the Philistim that Israel fought all the time and also the big uh, uh, giant, Goliath, Philistine. Mm-hmm. 
Just let you know, black folks, it's all we're dealing with right now. Go ahead and read. Uh, skip down rather to verse 20. Go ahead. These are the sons of Ham. These are the sons of Ham. After their families, after their tongues, in their countries, and in their nations. Now, just let us know Ham had four sons. And all his sons are still on the same continent. But we're going to deal with the main one. What verse are we? We had 21. 21? Go ahead. Unto Shem also, the father of all the children of Eber, the brother of Japheth, the elder, even to him were children born. So who is Shem? Those are the ones that we came out of, Israel, sisters and brothers. Because we don't read no more Shem, it's because by the time we get down to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, they had stopped. They came out of these. We have to go all over the book to put them together. So what we're going to do is we're going to deal with the ones that came out of Shem, our ancestor, Jacob, and Israel. Mm -hmm. So we're going to go into Genesis, the 37th chapter, because we are Shemites. You hear people all the time, you get the, uh, the Jewish people, somebody say something against them, well, you're anti-Semitic. But you know who came out of Shem? We did. The Arabs came out of Shem. So when you say anti-Semitic, you have to, that, that, that's not quite true. Hmm. Unless you, against everybody that came out of Shem. But we're dealing with our father Israel, because this is our history that we're about to get involved in. But we need to know what color Israel is. Because everybody have been Israel but us. Even my Hebrew Israelite brothers trying to make the Mexicans and the, uh, and the uh, uh, Puerto Ricans and the Native Americans, which are called Indian Israel. But we are going to deal with all of that, sisters and brothers, before this series is out of it. It's finished. Now let's start at 37 and 1. This is dealing with our ancestors. Go ahead and read. And Jacob dwelt in the land wherein his father was a stranger, in the land of Canaan. Uh-huh. These are the generations of Jacob. Go ahead. Joseph, being 17 years old, was feeding the flock with his brethren. Uh-huh. And the lad was with the sons of Bilhah and with the sons of Zilpah, his father's wives. Go ahead. And Joseph brought unto his father their evil report. So now, Jacob was there and he named all his sons. But the one that we going to really work around is Joseph. Mm -hmm. Joseph was second to the last son he had, like, and he was a young son, and Jacob loved him more than the other son. So that give you, learn from this, so you won't mess around and favor your child, one child over other, because you make, one, make them hate one another. But the whole thing is, Jacob also used to tell all the evil stuff that his brothers did. So he was a snitch. Go ahead and read. Three. Now Israel loved Joseph more than all his children uh -huh. because he was the son of his old age. Go ahead. And he made him a coat of many colors. Now right away he showed favoritism. Go ahead and read. And when his brethren saw that their father loved him more than all his brethren, uh -huh. they hated him and could not speak peaceably unto him. So they didn't like him because of their father favored him over them. And so and they hated him. So skip down to verse 12. Verse 12 and go ahead. Verse 12. I changed that. Go okay. ahead. And his brethren went to feed their father's flock in Shechem. Uh -huh. And Israel said unto Joseph, Do not thy brethren feed the flock in Shechem? Come, and I will send thee unto them. And he said to him, Here am I. So they was in a place called Shechem, feeding the flock. So what Jacob did, he told Joseph, your brothers in Shechem, go on down there. I guess he wanted another report. But let's show you what happened when they saw Joseph coming. Skip down to verse 18. Verse 18 and go ahead. And when they saw him afar off, even before he came near unto them, uh -huh. they conspired against him to slay him. His own brother. They really hated him. So when they saw him coming, they plotted to kill him. Skip down to verse 21. Verse 21, but this is the oldest son which kicked in. Go ahead and read. And Reuben heard it, and he delivered him out of their hands and said, 
let us not kill him. They would have killed Joseph had it not for Jacob's oldest son, Reuben. He said, no, 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 let's wait a minute. Because he had to figure out a way to get him away from him. Go ahead and read. And Reuben said unto them, shed no blood, uh -huh. but cast him into this pit that is in the wilderness. Go ahead. And lay no hand upon him that he, that he might rid him out of their hands to deliver him to his father again. So he made the suggestion to put him in this pit with no water because he was trying to figure out how to deliver him and take him back to his father so don't send this boy out here no more because they want to kill him. But what happened? Skip down to verse 24. Verse 24 and go ahead. And they took him and cast him into a pit and the pit was empty. There was no water in it. Go ahead. And they sat down to eat bread and they lifted up their eyes and looked and behold a company of Ishmaelites came from Gilead with their camels, bearing spicery and balm and myrrh, going to carry it down to Egypt. Now, while they threw Joseph in the pit where no water, they setting up eating lunch. They looked up and they saw some Arabs coming. Those are Ishmaelite sisters and brothers. That's what the Arabs They come out of Ishmael. And what did they do? Go ahead, go ahead. And Judah said unto his brethren, What profit is it if we slay our brother go ahead. and conceal his blood? Uh -huh. Come. And let us sell him to the Ishmaelites. Go ahead. And let not our hand be upon him. Go ahead. For he is our brother and our flesh, and his brethren were content. So Judah at least, so Judah kicked in too. So why are we going to kill this guy? After all, he's our brother and he's our blood. Let's sell him to the Ishmaelites. Hmm. Because he's going to show you these Ishmaelites was Midianite, what, 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 had to live in Midian. Because the Midianite and the Ishmaelites, both of them are Abraham's children, but Ishmael, uh, but the uh, 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 Arabs come out of Ishmael. And the Midianites is the land that the Arabs own right now because they've taken it over. Yeah. In fact, the Arabs took over, over a lot of things. We're going to find that out. Okay? Hmm. So they said, so they lifted him up. What verse? We're at 28. Go ahead. Then there passed by Midianites, these merchant are, men. These are still Ishmaelites, but they come from Midian, okay? Merchant men. Go ahead and read. And they drew and lifted up Joseph out of the pit uh -huh. and sold Joseph to the Ishmaelites uh -huh. for 20 pieces of silver. And they brought Joseph into Egypt. So now his brothers lifted him out of the pit and sold him to these Ishmaelites, which was from Midian. And they took him and took him into Egypt, sisters and brothers, mm -hmm. their own brother. Okay? Yep. Let's skip now to verse 36 and let's see what happened. Verse 36 and go ahead. And the Midianites sold him into Egypt unto Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh and captain of the guard. So now they went out there and sold him to an Egyptian sister and brothers. That's how Joseph got into Egyptian. We, the first sale of Israel was made by Israel. I want y'all to know that. Joseph's brother sold him to the Arabs, and the Arabs went on there and sold him to the Egyptians. Now let's go into Genesis, the 39th chapter. Genesis chapter 39. And we're going to start at verse 1, because we're going to find out what color Israel is. And when you leave here, you're going to know for sure. And can't nobody change your mind. And all Israel, verse 1. Genesis 39 and 1. Go ahead. And Joseph was brought down to Egypt. And Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, captain of the guard, an Egyptian. Go ahead. Bought him of the hands of the Ishmaelites, which had brought him down thither. So this Potiphar, he was a captain of the guards. He, he's an important play, person. So he bought Joseph. Go ahead and read. And the Lord was with Joseph. And he was a prosperous man. Uh -huh. And he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. Go ahead. And his master saw that the Lord was with him. And that the Lord made all that he did to prosper in his hand. Now, he saw that the Lord was with Joseph. Because all of a sudden, his house started to get rich. Mm -hmm. Things started getting better. So he turned everything over to Joseph. Go ahead and read. Four. And Joseph found grace in his sight. And he served him. And he made him overseer over his house, and all that he had, he put into his hand. So the Lord gave him great favor, didn't he? Mm -hmm. So he was in charge of everything in part of, in part of Father's house. But skip now, now, to verse 7, and go ahead. And it came to pass after these things that his master's wife cast her eyes upon Joseph, and she said, lie with me. Now, 
Sometimes when the good come, bad come too. And you got to know it's bad. So now how are you going to be deal with a man and be over his whole household and run all his business and you're going to go and sleep with his wife? Mm. What did Joseph say? Go ahead and read. But he refused and said unto his master's uh-huh. wife, Behold, my master wardeth not what is with me in the house. So my master don't know all that's with me in the house. Mm-hmm. That's how much he trusts me. Mm-hmm. I could steal from him and he wouldn't know it because he don't know it because his house didn't prosper so under my hand. Go ahead and read. And he have committed all that he have to my hand. Go ahead. There is none greater in this house than I. Neither have he kept back anything from me but thee. Uh-huh. Because thou art his wife. Go ahead. How then can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? Because that would be adultery, sisters and brothers. Mm-hmm. Notice. That means that the man was so when he was 17 years old, but his fathers had taught them the law. When they were children. Yep. Because he was 17 when he got sold by his brothers. So he didn't say sin against Potiphar. He says sin against God. He said that's wickedness. Mm -hmm. Because you sleep with another man's wife, you're an adulterer. Go ahead and read. 10. And it came to pass that she spake to Joseph day by day that he hearkened not unto her to lie by her or to be with her. I mean, she was on him, but he still wouldn't go with it. That's what you have to do, sister and brother. You have to resist sin because every day something's going to come your way. Therefore, you have to be on the ball every day. So no matter what she did, Joseph said, "Uh uh-uh. What verse was that? We're at 11. Skip down to verse 12 and read it. And she called him by his garment saying, lie with me. Uh-huh. And he left his garment in her hand and fled and got him out. Now, so he went in one time. One time she grabbed him and she grabbed his clothes and he ran to get away from her. What did she do? She used that against him because she was upset. How is it that you're a servant and I'm your master's wife and you don't want me? Not if it's going to cause get me in trouble with my God. It's all that simple. Skip down to verse 16 and go ahead. And she laid up his garment by her until his Lord came home. Uh Uh-huh. And she spake unto him according to these words, saying, The Hebrew servant which thou hast brought unto us came in unto me to mock me. Go ahead. And it came to pass as I lifted up my voice and cried that he left his garment with me and fled out. Ain't that something? Like he coming out of rape her and she screamed. And he ran and, and left his garment there. No, oh, he ran out of there to keep from committing adultery. Mm-hmm. See, see, this is the importance of raising your children, sisters and brothers. Right. You don't wait till they get all grown like I had to do to find out that committing adultery was a sin against God. Hey, whatever feel good, that's whatever make you feel good, that's what you do. But once... I found out, I stopped. Had I known that had been taught up from childhood, out of the Bible, not so well, you know, people, well, you know, that might not be wrong, but that I had been taught like Joseph then was taught, then I would have pulled away from it. That's why the Lord is the mercy. That's why the grace of Jesus come in, sister and brother. Mm-hmm. He give us all the chance to put away our wrongdoing. Yes, wow. And give us back Access to immortality on the good side of the kingdom. So now he said, now he fled. Go ahead and read. What verse? 19. Uh Uh-huh. And it came to pass when his master heard the words of his wife, which she spake unto him, saying, Uh after this banner did thy servant to me, that his wrath was kindled. Now, she lied on Joseph. Now, he mad at him. Go ahead and read. And Joseph's master took him and put him into prison a place where the king's prisoners were bound, and he was there in the prison. Go ahead. But the Lord was with Joseph and showed him mercy and gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. So no matter what happened to you or where it happened, if the Lord is with you, and the Lord is with you if he keeps his law, sister and brother, you're going to always float to the top. Amen. Go ahead and read. 22. And the keeper of the prison committed to Joseph's hand all the prisoners that were in the prison. And whatsoever they did there, he was the doer of it. 
Now to keep out of prison, put he put him in charge at a prison house. Mm -hmm. And whatever happened in the prison house, it was according to Joseph, sisters and brothers. That's because the Lord was on his side. Now let's go on to look at a couple of things that happened to, to them. Let's go on to Genesis, the 40th chapter now. And we're going to start at verse 2 because you had some dignitaries that got locked up by Pharaoh. And of course, that put them under Joseph. Genesis 40 <laughs> and verse 2. Go ahead and read. And Pharaoh was wroth against two of his officers, against the chief of the butlers, and against the chief of the bakers. Go ahead. And he put them in ward in the house of the captain of the guard into the prison, the place where Joseph was bound. Now he put in the same place that Joseph was, in prison, sisters and brothers. Because, uh, and Joseph was over this prison. But skip down to verse 6 and go ahead. And Joseph came in unto them in the morning and looked upon them, and behold, they were sad. Uh huh. And he asked Pharaoh's officers that were with him in the ward of his Lord's house, saying, Wherefore look ye so sadly today? So these are officers of Pharaoh. You got the one, the baker, and the one, you know, that was, you know, that was, what, a uh, 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 butcher? A butler, rather? But they was high up. When you're the butler for Pharaoh and you are the baker for Pharaoh, you big shot. But Joseph's coming out and he saw these guys were sad and he wanted to know why. Go ahead and read. Eight. And they said unto him, we have dreamed a dream and there is no interpreter of it. Uh -huh. And Joseph said unto them, do not interpretations belong to God. Tell me them, I pray you. So when they told him, we didn't dream a dream. And we don't have nobody to interpret these dreams for us. So Joseph said, God is the one that interprets dreams. Tell me. And each one of them told him their dream. And we're going to deal with the one that told him first. Skip down to verse 12. Verse 12 and go ahead. And Joseph said unto him, this is the interpretation of it. Now, the so he told him his dream. He's okay, this is interpretation of your dream. Go ahead and read. The three branches are three days. Uh-huh. Yet within three days shall Pharaoh lift up thine head. Go ahead. And restore thee unto thy place. Go ahead. And thou shalt deliver Pharaoh's cup into his hand. Uh-huh. After the former manner when thou was his butler. These are now in three days. Pharaoh going to restore you back to your position. Mm-hmm. That's what it's telling you. Go ahead and read. But think on me. When it shall be well with thee. So, but when he do that, remember me now. Because I'm telling you now what he's going to do in three days. Mm -hmm. So when he do it, remember me. Go ahead and read. And show kindness, I pray thee unto me. Go ahead. And make mention of me unto Pharaoh. Uh -huh. And bring me out of this house. Now, now, I want you to make mention of Pharaoh. To get me out of this. And then he told the next guy his dream. Mm -hmm. And he ended up getting hung. Mm -hmm. But this guy... Joseph asked him, please remember me. Yes. And let's see if he did and under what conditions did he remember him. Let's go into the 41st chapter of Genesis. Genesis 41. And start reading that verse 1. 41 and 1. Go ahead. And it came to pass at the end of two full years that Pharaoh dreamed and behold, he stood by the river. Two years later, full year, that means it was total 12 months. Yep. Wasn't nobody, nothing in between it. Go ahead and read. And behold, there came up out of the river seven well-favored kind and fat flesh, and they fed in a meadow. Go ahead. And behold, seven other kind came up after them out of the river, uh -huh. ill-favored and lean flesh. Go ahead. And stood by the other kind upon the brink of the river. So now he saw two sets of cows, one real robust and healthy and meaty and then he saw some real sick and puny and they stood together and what happened go ahead and read and the ill favored and the lean flesh kind did eat up the seven well favored and fat kind so pharaoh awoke that had to be something real skinny cow ate up some fat cow hmm. pharaoh woke up but he went back to sleep go ahead and read and he slept and dreamed the second time and behold, seven ears of corn came up upon one stalk, rank and good. Uh -huh. And behold, seven thin ears and blasted with the east wind sprung up after them. So the same scenario. I have seven ears of corn all robust. 
on this stalk, and then you had seven puny corn stalks. So what happened? Go ahead and read. Seven. And the seven thin ears devoured the seven rank and full ears. Uh -huh. And Pharaoh awoke, and behold, it was a dream. Go ahead. And it came to pass in the morning that his spirit was troubled, and he sent and called for all the magicians of Egypt. And all the wise men thereof. Uh -huh. And Pharaoh told them his dream, but there was none that could interpret them unto Pharaoh. So Pharaoh was, was, was worried about this dream. So he called all his dignitaries, the one that's supposed to have all the sense, told it to them, and they didn't know what it mean. Go ahead and read. Then spake the chief butler unto Pharaoh, saying, I do remember my faults this day. Ain't that something now? This is the guy two years ago. Joseph told him, you're going to get out of here, mister. And when you get out of here and stand before Pharaoh, remember me. Mm -hmm. Now, now he said, I remember my faults. But he, I'm pretty sure he didn't care about Joseph. He probably wanted a promotion. Mm -hmm. Now I remember my faults. Go ahead and read. 10. Pharaoh was wroth with his servants and put me in ward in the captain of the guard's house, uh -huh. both me and the chief baker. Go ahead. And we dreamed a dream in one night, I and he. Uh -huh. We dreamed each man according to the interpretation of his dream. Go ahead. And there was there with us a young man, an Hebrew servant to the captain of the guard. And we told him, and he interpreted to us our dreams. To each man according to his dream did he interpret. He said, now look, we had a dream. Each one of us had our own dream. And we got this young Hebrew, a young man that was a Hebrew. He told us our dream. Yeah. And it happened just like he told us. Go ahead and read. 13. And it came to pass as he interpreted to us, so it was. Uh-huh. Me, he restored unto mine office, and him, he hanged. So he restored me to the office, to my position. But the butler, he hanged. he hanged. Go ahead. Then Pharaoh sent and called Joseph, and they brought him hastily out of the dungeon, and he shaved himself uh -huh. and changed his raiment and came in unto Pharaoh. So when he called Joseph, Joseph shaved himself. Egyptian really didn't like hair. Every time you see a beard on an Egyptian, it looks like it's just a little bit of strain, don't it? So Joseph in Hebrew, we... Grew beard, so he shaved himself. Go ahead and read. 15. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, I have dreamed a dream, and there is none that can interpret it. Go ahead. And I have heard say of thee that thou canst understand a dream to interpret it. Uh-huh. And Joseph answered Pharaoh, saying, It is not in me. God shall give Pharaoh an answer of peace. He told him the same thing he told the guys in prison, didn't he? Mm -hmm. God is the one that's going to give you an answer. Then he started to break this thing down. Skip down to verse 29. 29. Go ahead. Because he told you about these seven uh, uh, fat cows and these seven lean cows and these seven robust, robust and healthy corn and these seven destroyed corn. He said, I'm going to tell you what these seven mean. Go ahead. Behold. There come seven years of great plenty throughout all the land of Egypt. So he said that what happened is the fat cows and the healthy corn represent seven years of great plenty. I mean, everything that, is, that Egypt plant is going to prosper. Yeah. Go ahead and read. And there shall arise after them seven years of famine. Go ahead. And all the plenty shall be forgotten in the land of Egypt, and the famine shall consume the land. Now, so we're going to let you, so now, you're going to have all of this robust crops, bubble crops. But what's going to happen is the seven years of famine is going to come and you're going to forget all about the seven years of prosperity. What verse was that? We have 31. Go ahead and read. And the plenty shall not be known in the land by reason of that famine following. Uh -huh. For it shall be very grievous. So it's just like you getting a great big check, but you got a whole lot of bills. By the time you get through, you ain't got no check left. And you ain't ready to take care of next uh, month's bill. So you in trouble. Yeah. So he said, the hard times are going to eat up the good time. Skip down to verse 39. Verse 39 and go ahead. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, for as much of God has showed thee. Wait a minute, wait a minute. That's 33, I'm sorry. Verse 33. 
Verse 33. Go ahead and read. Now, therefore, let Pharaoh look out a man discreet and wise and set him over the land of Egypt. Now, Joseph not only interpreted his dream, now he is advising Pharaoh. Think about it. 17 years old, got sold by his brothers and was a servant to his individual in his household. And now he is advising the king of, e of Egypt. Think about it. Hmm. Only a man of God can do that. Yeah, God was with him. Go ahead and read. 34. Let Pharaoh do this and let him appoint officers over the land and take up the fifth part of the land of Egypt in the seven plenteous years. Go ahead. And let them gather all the food of those good years that come and lay up corn under the hand of Pharaoh and let them keep food in the cities. So he said, Pharaoh, why you got these bumper crops in the good years? Why don't you store food? Get a wise and discreet man and set him over this and give, put people under him. So he can work with. So while you're having a good time, it's just like you're making money with both hands. Instead of going out and parting and blow it, save some. Just in case good times might go away. Mm -hmm. And what happened? Go ahead and read. 36. And that food shall be for store to the land against the seven years of famine which shall be in the land of Egypt, that the land perish not through the famine. In other words, put up some money for a rainy day. Because you don't know when it's going to happen. Skip down to verse 40. Uh, uh, what verse was that? Uh, I just finished verse 36. Yes. Finish 36. Go ahead. And skip down to verse 39 and go ahead. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, uh -huh. For as much as God has showed thee all this, there is none so discreet and wise as thou art. Pharaoh put a smart in. Yep. Because he saw it in that God and he believed Joseph. If God going to show you this, then who's wise and dis wiser and discreet more than you are? Mm -hmm. I'm going to put this thing under you. Go ahead and read. 40. Thou shalt be over my house, uh -huh. and according unto thy word shall all my people be ruled. Go ahead. Only in the king, in the throne, will I be greater than thou. So now, Pharaoh put Joseph over all of, Israel, uh, all of Egypt. He said, I'm going to only be greater than you in the throne. I ain't going to say nothing. It's all going to be in your hand, Joseph. And then what did he did? do? Go ahead and read. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, See, I have set thee over all the land of Egypt. Now, this happened, sister and brother. The Lord made Joseph, Hebrew Israelite, young Israelite, mm -hmm. over all the land. And it's a strange thing when he took over because he was only 30 years old. Skip down to verse 45 and go ahead. And Pharaoh called Joseph's name Zapnath Paanea. Uh huh. And he gave him to wife Asenath, the daughter of Potiphar, priest of On. Go ahead. And Joseph went over all the land of Egypt. So he gave him, you know, just like, uh, I don't know if you remember seeing that old picture of Roots. Wherever you go, they give you a name after they got. So Joseph wasn't good enough, so he gave him an a Egyptian name. And then he turned around and gave him an Egyptian woman to wife. So Joseph's wife was Egypt, was an Egyptian. Because Israel had 12 sons and one daughter. So all of Israel got their wives from among other people. Mm -hmm. Black people. Go ahead and read. 46. And Joseph was 30 years old when he stood before Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Uh -huh. And Joseph went out from the presence of Pharaoh and went throughout all the land of Egypt. Now, I always thought when I read that, why 30? Because the law said you uh, enter into the, the, the uh, service of the tabernacle at 30. Maybe this is God's business too when he puts you in charge of something. But he was 30 years old and he went out over all of Egypt. Go ahead. What then, verse? We have 47. Go ahead. And in the seven plenteous years, the earth brought forth by handfuls. Uh-huh. And he gathered up all the food of the seven years which were in the land of Egypt. Uh -huh. And laid up the food in the cities, the food of the field which was round about every city laid he up in the same. Now, so Joseph went to every city and all the crops. And he had storage bins for food all over Egypt. Every city was the same, sisters and brothers. Skip down to verse 53. Verse 53 and go ahead. And the seven years of plenteousness that was in the land of Egypt were ended. 
Just like Joseph said, go ahead. And the seven years of dearth began to come, according to, as Joseph had said, and the dearth was in all lands. Go ahead. But in all the land of Egypt, there was bread. Go ahead. And when all the land of Egypt was famished, the people cried to Pharaoh for bread. And Pharaoh said unto all the Egyptians, go unto Joseph, what he said to you, do. So he said, go to Joseph. We're going to read, uh, we're going to read the rest of the verses in this chapter, okay? He said, but go to Joseph. He didn't try to tell him nothing. Go to Joseph. Whatever Joseph tell you, that's what you do. Go ahead and read. And the famine was over all the face of the earth. Uh -huh. And Joseph opened up all the storehouses and sold unto the Egyptians. And the famine waxed so in the land of Egypt. So not only was the famine in Egypt, it was over all the earth. Even where Joseph's family was. Go ahead and read. And all countries came into Egypt to Joseph for to buy corn. Uh -huh. Because that was the famine was so sore in all lands. So now, it was sore in the land of Canaan too, where our forefathers were, Jacob. So now let's go into Genesis, the 42nd chapter, and start at verse 1. Genesis 42 and verse 1. So I remember, famine is everywhere now. Them good seven years, now all of the country was in trouble because they did not have a Joseph there to advise them what to do while the good times were. So Joseph did his job so good until he had enough stored up to feed all the other nation. Hmm. That'll let you know he was wise and the okay. wisdom come from God. Okay. 42 and 1. Genesis 42 and verse 1. Okay, go ahead. Now when Jacob saw that there was corn in Egypt, Jacob said unto his sons, Why do ye look one upon another? Go ahead. And he said, Behold, I have heard that there is corn in Egypt. Get you down thither and buy for us from thence that we may live and not die. See, the famine was there too in the land of Canaan. That was before it was called Israel. He said, look, why are you guys looking, talking to something? Why y'all sitting up here looking at one another? Everybody's hungry. Right. Get you down in Egypt and buy some corn so we might live and not die from this famine. Go ahead and read. And Joseph's ten brethren went down to buy corn in Egypt. Uh-huh. But Benjamin, Joseph's brother, Jacob sinned not with his brethren, for he said, Let's peradventure mischief befall him. Go ahead. And the sons of Israel came to buy corn among those that came for the famine was in the land of Canaan. See, the sons of Israel, that's Jacob's name that God gave him, Israel. That's why we are called Israelites. Mm -hmm. Okay? So, all, so, so his sons went on down now to buy corn. Keep, keep read. Go in Egypt. Keep read. Six. And Joseph was the governor over the land. Now, Joseph was the governor over the land. Their own brother that they had sold. Mm -hmm. So you know they're going to know who he is. No, Whoa, yeah. here my brother is. We got it made. Didn't quite go like that. No. Let's see what happened. Go ahead and read. And he it was that sold to all the people of the land. And Joseph's brethren came and bowed down themselves before him with their faces to the earth. Uh-huh. And Joseph saw his brethren, and he knew them, but made himself strange unto them, now, and spake saw, roughly unto them. Now, when he saw them, he knew who they were, but they didn't know who he was. Remember, he was 17 years old when they sold him. Mm-hmm. Now he's 30 years, now he's at least, let me see, he was 30 years old when he took over. And then the famine was for seven years. That's 37. Now this is the beginning. No, the good time was seven years. So that was 37 at the end of the good time, wasn't it? So at some point during the famine, so Joseph was at least 37 to 38 years old when they saw him. But they sold him when he was 17. Sometime your looks might change a little bit. So now he know them, they didn't know him, so he spoke rough to them. What mm -hmm. verse are we? Middle of seven. Uh-huh. And he said unto them, Whence come ye? And they said, From the land of Canaan to buy food. Uh-huh. And, and Joseph knew his brethren, but they knew not him. They didn't know who he was. You know, look like if the Israelite was white and the Egyptian is black, they would have waited a minute. We got us a Hebrew Israelite that's running all Egypt. Now we know we got some favor. And they probably would say, wait, wait a minute. That, that's, it has to be our brother. 
But no, he was just another black among many blacks. Don't you know the average person don't know that Egypt is on the African continent? Egypt is Ham's second oldest son, Mizraim. And when the Greeks saw the Mizraimites, you know what they said? These people are black. Look under the word Egypt. You know what Egypt means? Black. So now, they didn't know him. He was an Egyptian to him. To them, go ahead and read. Nine. And Joseph remembered the dreams which he dreamed of them and said unto them, uh -huh. Ye are spies to see the nakedness of the land ye are come. He said, you're a spy. But I want to show you something before we go any further. Keep the, right there, we're going to continue. I want to show you what Joseph looked like and let you know too because we have a whole lot of Egyptology system, brother, so that Israel was never in Egypt. They ain't never been captive of Egypt, a slave. But brother, put up Joseph's picture in there and let me show you what they said about it. Because this was a corn that they found. This was the corn they found in Egypt. What's it say? This is the image of Joseph that was found on a corn in the land of Egypt. According to the article, the book of the corn had the image of wheat and corn. Let me see what it said. That's on the back. And name Joseph, viceroy of Egypt. What's this viceroy mean? He is, a, he is the second ruler in Egypt. Now, they found this. this that article that, 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 that they had, they found this in Egypt, sisters and brothers. So now, who can say that Joseph wasn't in Egypt? This corn said he was viceroy of Egypt, and uh, he looked pretty black to me. Okay. Let's get back to uh, what we left off at. What verse? We're at verse 10. Go ahead and read. And they said unto him, Nay, my Lord, but to buy food are thy servants come. Now they call him Lord because they don't know who he is. All they see is this Egyptian sitting up there <laughs> and call them spies and everything else. No, we're not spies. We just men, we men are one, we, we your servant. We just come to buy food. That's the only reason we here. Go ahead and read. 11. We are all one man's son. Uh -huh. We are true men. Thy servants are no spies. Go ahead. And he said unto them, Nay, but to see the nakedness of the land ye are come. So he was messing with them. He know they weren't spies, but he was messing with them, sisters and brothers. And skip down to verse 21. Verse 21. And he had a con heard a confession. And they didn't even know that he heard it. Verse 21, go ahead and read. And they said one to another, We are verily guilty concerning our brethren, in that we saw the anguish of his soul when, we bes when he besought us, uh -huh. and we would not hear. Go ahead. Therefore is this distress come upon us. Now they're saying, look, look, what we did to our young brother. That's why we're in trouble now. Go ahead, because God is paying us back. Go ahead and read. And Reuben answered them, saying, Spake I not unto you, saying, Do not sin against the child, and ye would not hear? Uh -huh. Therefore, behold, also his blood is required. Now he know who stood up on his part, don't he? Yeah. Why did he know that? Go ahead and read. And they knew not that Joseph understood them, for he spake unto them by an interpreter. Ain't that so? Mm -hmm. He spoke the Egyptian language and had an interpreter to speak the Hebrew language. So they thought that he was an Egyptian. He was ruler of Egypt, black like Egypt, and he spoke the language. They couldn't possibly know who he was. But after a while, Joseph got tired of playing the game and he couldn't last no longer, so he revealed himself. Let's go into the 45th chapter of Genesis. Genesis chapter 45. His brothers thought that he was an Egyptian sister and brothers. And you cannot, you cannot be mistaken for an Egyptian if Egypt, Ham's second oldest son, is black and you are white. That just don't fly under nobody's banner. 45 and 1, go ahead and read. 
Then Joseph could not refrain himself before all them that stood by him. Go ahead. And he cried, cause every man to go out from me. Uh -huh. And there stood no man with him, while Joseph made himself known unto his brethren. Now, he told all the Egyptians, get on out of here. Because he wanted to do something with it. He's going to reveal himself. Go ahead and read. And he wept aloud. And the Egyptians and the house of Pharaoh heard. Uh -huh. And Joseph said unto his brethren, I am Joseph. Uh -huh. Doth my father yet live? Now, that got him. I'm, I'm Joseph. Did my father yet live? Go ahead and read. And his brethren could not answer him, for they were troubled at his presence. So they did What's this man talking about? Then he told them something, and they knew he was Joseph. Go ahead and read. And Joseph said unto his brethren, Come near to me, I pray you. Uh huh. And they came near. Uh huh. And he said, I am Joseph, your brethren, whom ye sold into Egypt. Yep, that's him, all right. <laughs> that's the evidence. Mm -hmm. Nobody else would know except for Joseph and his brothers. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, I'm Joseph. I'm the one that y'all sold to the Ishmaelites, which yep. sold me to Egypt. Then they knew. Go ahead and read. Now, therefore, be not grieved nor angry with yourselves that ye sold me hither. Go ahead. For God did send me before you to preserve life. And let you know sometimes, sisters and brothers, when things real, get real ugly for you and get real hard, that don't mean that God is through with you. Sometimes he is preparing you to do a bigger work. Mm -hmm. So Joseph realized that. Y'all understand? He realized that, hey, y'all didn't do this. God is the one that put you up to this so I could come before you and save life. It's just like I came to Chicago after I got out of the military to stay with my brother for one week, and I was going on to San Francisco, had a brand new car, pocket full of money, 68 Road Runner with four in the flow. Paid for, pocket full of money. I'm going to go and I'm going to run the women down in San Francisco. Well, my brother called from Chicago and said, will you wait for a week? I'm coming down in a week and then they can ride back with me and spend a week with me in Chicago. Then you can go on back to San Francisco. That was over 53 years ago. Why am I here? I'm still trying to figure that out. Okay? But get back to the lesson. Skip down to verse 9. Verse 9 and go ahead. Hey, she, and go up to my father and say unto him, Thus saith thy son Joseph. Go ahead. God hath made me lord of all Egypt. Come down unto me, tarry not. He said, I want you to go tell my father Jacob that God hath made me the ruler of Egypt. So come on down and don't waste no time. Skip down to verse 28. Let's see what Jacob did. Go ahead and read. And Israel said, it is enough. Joseph, my son, is yet alive. I will go and see him before I die. See, and he was surprised. Mm -hmm. So he's still alive. It took some convincing now. But still, he said, I'm going to go and see him before I die. That's how Jacob and his whole household ended up in Egypt, sisters and brothers. But then Jacob went out to Egypt. And he died in Egypt. And Jacob had told Joseph, when I die, I do not want you to leave, bury me in Egypt. I want, to take, I want you to take me back to the land of Canaan and bury me where my father Abraham and Isaac was buried, and my mother's was buried. He made Joseph swear to him, and Joseph had to hold to it. So let's go into Genesis the 50, chapter 50. Genesis chapter 50. After Jacob had died, Joseph had to appeal to the house of Pharaoh and said, look, my father made me swear that he wouldn't bury me, in, that I wouldn't bury him in Egypt. Verse 5, go ahead. My father made me swear, saying, lo, I die in my grave, which I have digged for me in the land of Canaan. There shall thou bury me. Now, therefore, let me go up, I pray thee, and bury my father, and I will come again. So Joseph had to ask Pharaoh that, because Pharaoh said, in the throne, I'm greater than you. So he said, let me go up and bury my father. He made me swear. Go ahead and read. 
And Pharaoh said, Go up and bury thy father according as he made thee swear. Go ahead. And Joseph went up to bury his father, and with him went up all the servants of Pharaoh, the elders of his house, and all the elders of the land of Egypt. So now Joseph was the important man, so all of the dignitaries of a pharaoh, the Egyptian, a great crowd went up and all of the children of Israel went to the Canaan, land of Canaan to bury, jo uh, 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 to bury Jacob. Go ahead and read. And all the house of Joseph and his brethren and his father's house, only their little ones and their flocks and their herds they left in the land of Goshen. Go ahead. And there went up with them both chariots and horsemen, and it was a very great company. Uh-huh. And they came to the threshing floor of Atad, which is beyond Jordan. Go ahead. And there they mourned with a great and very sore lamentation. And he made a mourning for his father seven days. So there's a great crowd, a mixture of Egyptian and Israelites. And they mourned Jacob. But let's see what the local people said when they saw this. Verse 11, go ahead. And when the inhabitants of the land, the Canaanites, saw the mourning in the floor of Atad, they said, this is a grievous mourning to the Egyptians. Uh-huh. Wherefore the name of it was called Abel Mizraim, which is beyond Jordan. Abel Mizraim mean the mourning of Egyptian sister. Mm -hmm. So when the Canaanites saw when the Canaanites saw these people, it's obvious they had clothes on like Egyptians, and all of them looked the same. Otherwise, they would have said, this is the morning of the Egyptian and the morning of the Israelite, because they would have known the Israelites that they different color, because remember, Jacob was in the land of Canaan before he went down into Egypt. Isn't this what we saw, Red? Yeah. So now, why wouldn't they know that these are two different people? They could not know. Because they look the same and dress the same. This is the morning of the Egyptian. That's what, and they call him by the they name. They didn't call him by the name that the Greek called him. They call him by the name that God gave him in the tenth chapter of Genesis, Mizraim. That's why I said Abel Mizraim, which is the morning of Egyptian.
kiss the sun.